told again and again that we need to embrace British values. At the same time, our government is, is pursuing policies that are complete, in complete contradiction to British values. It's easy to be liberal when the going is good. When the going is tough, that's when your liberality is tested. When it's not easy to be liberal, that's when you find out how liberal you really are. We're in London to find out what effect 13 years of the war on terror has had on liberality on both sides of the Atlantic. What does it mean to the West for them to continuously be intervening militarily through undemocratic means in a different region? How does that reflect back on the West? See, I think it's counterproductive, because if, if you are bringing democracy on the back of a tank, it's counterproductive. Do you sense that the West is slowly but surely becoming authoritarian on this level, on the level of decision-making on foreign policy? Yeah, but I think we, we can already see that, you know, because when you create this whole thing like, you know, terror, war on terror, you can see the human rights and civil rights in the USA are being curtailed. I mean, the example of National Security Agency is blatant. I mean, what what is going on? And the, and, the, and the main focus of these surveillance campaigns, for the time being, are Muslims. No, of course, you see, Muslims, it's a long story, Muslims are the other. Do you agree that such persistent and continuous intervention in other people's affairs militarily is reflecting bad on Western democracy? No, I don't think so at all. Firstly, it isn't consistent and, you know, kind of uh, going on. It certainly isn't... How about a year? How about every, a war every year? It's not, it's not undemocratic. It's not a war every year. For the last, two, for the last 12 years, we can count 12 wars. No. What, what are the 12 wars? You want me to count yeah. them for you? Give By the way, I asked the questions. <laughs> but I will welcome a couple from you. No, Afghanistan, no, no. Iraq, ongoing Yemen, Somalia, on. Mali. Shall I go on? Well, no, hang on, hang on. I well, you won't get to 12, firstly. But uh, secondly, these aren't wars in the conventional sense. If you're calling drone attacks wars, pff, I mean, you can do so if you want to, but it's a very different setup. What is it? What is it when you attack uh, various places whenever you want in a place like Somalia? What do you call that? Well, hang on. If hang it's on, not a war, what do you call it? Who are people attacking here? Wait a second. Who are people attacking here? They're not going to war with the country. They are doing precision target attacks on terrorists. What does it mean for American presidents to start giving assassination orders of people, including Americans, overseas? It what does it mean to democracy? It means protecting that democracy in this context. It means people who wish to do you harm, wish to do your citizens harm, and, and you have an opportunity to end that harm, you take it. That's so, what it means. There's nothing undemocratic about that. Originally, the idea was based on the... The, the first care of every democratic leader is the security of their people. That's the first There's care. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Surely today there are more threats coming from the Great Middle East than before 9-11. Uh, well, there are probably the same level of threats, just in a different configuration. Same level of threats? Well, look at... Look at, look look at Iraq, look at Syria, look, look at Somalia, what, look at Yemen, look at Mali, to, well, look at North Africa. wasn't picked up in 2001. This is a whole issue. We didn't take it seriously. We allowed a threat to escalate to a certain point, then it showed itself properly, and then there was action to roll it back. There's a, there's a date, I think, that we need to look at, which is the end of the Bush presidency. Is the world today a safer or less safer place than in 2008-9. And I would contend, actually, in 2008-9, the world was safer than in 2001, and we're now in a more dangerous place. And that reflects what's happened since that time, when we've disengaged, when the West has disengaged from the Middle East. It turns out the disengagement is as dangerous a problem as engagement. But you see, again, if Western powers, America, are doing something, quite honestly, don't, they don't know if we do this, if we remove this dictatorship, what will come next? They have, because it's uncharted territory. So the Nobody genie knows. is out of the box. Nobody and knows. I think, you see, ultimately comes down to democracy, one person, one vote, OK? And those people who have never been given a chance to exercise one person, one vote, and they are used to shutting up their mouths, etc. once you open that up, then the first thing they fall on is identity politics. I am a Kurd, I am a Sunni, I am a Shiite, you know. In a way, that's the starting point for democracy, but it takes time. I think each country has its own uh, culture and background. It has to grow out of that, you know, and it takes time. How do you see this moving forward? Do you see that we're going to have more of the same and, and intentions are going to continue to exasperate with the recent intervention in Iraq? Or do you think this is going to be wrapped up? No, I think everyone has stated we are now in a long battle with radical Islam. It's the long war. But I note radical Islam, not Islam, radical Islam. And the Islamic world is at a battle with radical Islam as well, as we've seen from what's been going on on the ground. Until that battle has been won, these interventions are going to continue. And you think, you, you think long wars like that, how do, they, how do they reflect on their own 
original societies, the democratic Western societies? I think as long as they're handled with democratic norms in place, they don't affect them at all. On the contrary, they can actually enhance solidarity in democratic societies, reminding us what the values are, the ideals are, that are under threat from those ideological fascists, essentially, who wish to impose a different system. In two words, you think the continuous war, the long war, as it's called here, you think this long war will have good or bad repercussions in Western democracies? Yeah, I think if they go for violence, there will be negative, there will be negative uh, uh, consequences. So military interventions will happen. Each of the democracies responds to warring on terror in its own particular way. In the United States, the primary concern is security. The British need to believe they're doing the proper thing. And the fault lies with less well-brought-up societies. For the French, it's about culture, even one might say about fashion.